All right, folks. I'm your host, the Dynamite Grip, and this is Comic Fever. And today, and on today's Comic Fever, we are going to do the non-spoiler review of the X Men. So, the, the X-Men Blue. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. So, the X-Men Blue of Non-Spoiler Review. Writer is Colin Bunn. Artists are Julian Lopez and Corey Smith. Colorists are Irma, Nivea, and letter is Feces, Drow, Carmagna, and cover artists are Arthur Adams and Peter Steigerwall. Hope I'm, hope I'm saying those names right. Uh, the X-Men Blue Team consists of Marvel Girl slash Jean Grey, Cyclops slash Gart Summers, Angels slash Warren, Warren Worthington III, Beast slash Hank McCoy, Iceman slash Bobby Drake. The art was very well done. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I don't follow comics on much of the art. Uh, so I couldn't tell you if it was in the vein of like a Jack Kirby or if it was um, done uh, like a McFarlane uh, because I just don't follow comics that deeply. I tend to follow more on the uh, story aspect of it, and the story so far has been very good. Um, but in my in my opinion, um, the as far as the art goes, they do a particularly awesome job with. Um, I wrote this down, but it's uh, in my script, but. I kind of want to give you a page just to show you, but they do a great job at like action sequences. Uh, so, but and they also they also the really, thing I like about this is um, the at the very beginning they give you a list of uh, everybody that's in the book all, like all the team members but inside they also um, as like battles and stuff like that going on they'll give you names of people who are fighting and what the powers that each mutant entails. Uh, so, it's very good. Um, it's definitely a pickup. I would recommend reading this to anybody. Um, particularly if you're an X-Men fan. Um, I don't know what team you really have to be a fan of in order to, to like this one because I found the old way they did things like when the having different teams but just calling one uncanny and the other you know just uh, X-Men I 
really, I personally couldn't tell. I could tell the difference in team members, but I could never tell which team is which, you know what I mean? You know, if, but for the longest time, I thought it was all the same. Uh, I just wondered why team members keep, kept switching out. But, anyway, uh, this I feel like really tells you who's in the teams and, um, during the book it tells you what their powers are, which are, really is a great thing. Alright, well, as I say at the end of all my reviews, and this is the end of my non-spoiler review. Oh, before I go, um, the overall art, um, like I said, I, I, I found it beautifully drawn. So, as I say at the end of all my videos, I'll see you on the other side. Now, if you're still here, if you haven't left yet, you are at the X-Men Blue, uh, number five, spoiler review. Uh, so we left the X-Men and they had just found Jimmy Hudson. Uh, Jimmy Hudson turns out is a Wolverine's, is Wolverine's son from another dimension. And they were resting in a bar when along comes this group that busting, calling themselves the New Marauders. We open up this group, we open up in this book, and Jimmy Hudson, Claws and Chief, runs at the invaders of their party saying, You'll never take me back, telling them they made a huge mistake for coming after them and they will die for it. So obviously, you know, Jimmy knows these people. Uh, soon an all out brawl breaks out, and members of each team take on members of the opposing team. Cyclops takes on Armor, Iceman and Beast take on Quicksilver, and Marvel World takes on someone. Who is only known at the moment as leader of these mara of these marauders? They soon learn that this woman that Marvel Girl is taking on, her name is Miss Sinister. And we find out that she is on a quest, much in the similar vein of her male counterpart. And she's looking for mutants and doing experiments on them. And Jimmy is one of those experiments. We also know, we also learn that she has knowledge of other dimensions and the mutants that are in those dimensions. And her end goal is to turn these mutants into an army. For what she doesn't say. After the fight, Jimmy runs off. And at first, the martyrs want to give chase, but the leader says, they will lead him for another day. The Marauders then disappear, and the X-Men go after Jimmy. It isn't long till they find Jim, find him, and after saying their goodbyes to the sheriff, they help them. They go home. Back in Medrapore, where is their home base? Uh, Jimmy is introduced to Magneto, and Magneto says that Jimmy definitely reminds him of Wolverine, but that there's something else that is familiar about him. Uh, Magneto then suggests that, well, says, well, why wasn't he taken to, um, to the school? Instead of here, in, instead of there in Madripoor, Jean Grey says, "Well, if we had shown up with all the these mutants, uh, Kitty would start getting uh, would start asking too many questions, and then 
and there's something about Jimmy that they don't have quite figured out yet, and so they don't know how to explain him to Kitty, so they decided to take him to Madripoor, and Kitty also makes a little pun about how she thought it would be kind of interesting to have a Wolverine-esque uh, team member. Um, Jimmy pipes up and says, I hope you don't plan on calling me that. And it ends with uh, Jean is looking at something in her hand and it's some kind of bandana with a crust on it and it was given it to her by Miss Sinister and uh, she doesn't know what it is or who this Miss Sin or completely who this Miss Sinister is, but she's gonna find out. And the book ends. Uh, like I said, everything was great, everything was awesome. Uh, I feel, I really find, I feel the momentum of this book is going really well. And I can't wait to move on. Uh, thank you for viewing. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please uh, comment on anything. Um, I hope I'm doing X-Men Blue number 5 justice. I hope I'm doing all these comics justice. And as I say at the end of every video, see you on the other side.